Hello, knitters. Barbara Benson here, and it is the last Thursday of the month. So we have our live stream that we do the last Thursday of every month. Um, there was a little bit of decision making process in this, trying to decide if I tried a Sunday and I didn't. It didn't. It didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. I can't can't explain any more than that. So we went with, uh, I, I think that sticking with Thursdays is a good idea. If we want to add like a one weekend, one a month, maybe, I don't know if we can support two lives a month. Do y'all want to see two lives a month? month? You can let me know. Right now, we only got a couple people in here, but there are people I recognize. Hello, Elizabeth. And hello, my golfer. Okay. Oh, my golfer says, here is my latest update since I started watching your podcast. Four sweaters, three shawls, five pairs of socks. You rock. You are awesome. You are a monster knitter now. That is absolutely amazing. Now, I think there's a sink possibility we might not get too many people in here today because I really and truly did not realize it was the last week of the month. And instead of getting the place saver up, on Monday, I didn't get it up until Tuesday, so that gives people a little less warning. And you know, maybe also it's a headband day. My hair was not my hair was not cooperating today, so it is a headband day. Um, it's it, I got the frizz, but it's not too bad. Um, less time for playing golf. Well, you know, there's always inclement weather, you know, you can't really pay, play golf when it's raining or snowing or too windy or too hot. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's balance. There's gotta be balance in everything. Um, oh, Monday, Thursday. Mm, I, that had not occurred to me at all. Um, that is not something I celebrate. So it just didn't, uh, occur to me, but when you when there's a holiday, definitely that is a distinct possibility. Uh, I don't even know what I mean. I know what Good Friday is for, but I don't know what Monday Thursday is for. I might have to look that up because um, I am fascinated by comparative religion. I took a really cool class in college that was comparative. Uh, I went to two universities, and one of them was actually a religious university, and I took a comparative religions class that was absolutely fascinating because we read like the Bhagavad Gita and um, the Tao Te Ching and a, a whole variety of religious texts. And it was really interesting to read. So fascinated by all that stuff. Uh, but I don't know all the holidays because I think there's probably a holiday every day if you really look into it. Um, hello, Arnetta in DC. Cherry blossoms and daffodils are blooming. That is fantastic. We get neither of those things down here. We don't get daffodils, and I don't think we get cherry blossoms. That is not that is not something that we get in our particular weather. Um, I do have my door open, though. I have a slidey door. I don't know if you could hear that. There's a helicopter. There's a helicopter going over. Don't know why. Um, Hey, Susan, you have blooms too? Excellent. So uh, Susan is in Ohio, so she's got the blooms too. And Ohio and D.C. are kind of the same. I think D.C. is a little bit further south than parts of, I don't know. I think longitudinally, latitudinally, I don't know. Uh, I think they're similar in like where they are. So it would make sense. Now, D.C. probably has more effect from the ocean because it's closer to the coast, but I, I don't know. I've only been to D.C. a couple times. Um, I actually went on a one really cool trip to D.C. in that I found out that there was a, an exhibit that was a traveling style exhibit. Well, not even traveling. It was an exchange. It was on exchange from a, uh, a, a museum in Germany allowed a chunk of their exhibit to go to the National Gallery, I believe it was. I think it was um, in DC and I found about about it and it's something that was very much interesting to me and I found out about it like the last week it was there and it was before I had my kid and my husband had a whole bunch of airline miles and he had like hotel points so it was like the one and only time I took a I mean I've taken solo trips but this was a solo trip where I flew up on a Friday spent Friday night there 
all day Saturday in took the the metro to the museum. Spent all day Saturday in the museum. Took the metro back to my hotel. Then came back Sunday morning and then went directly from the. Uh, museum to the airport so I could have as much time on Saturday and Sunday in the museum to see the exhibits that I wanted to see but that wasn't one of those fun trips where it was like you know I was young I think I was in my late 20s all I had was a backpack and it was like we're gonna do this thing you know before you have a whole family to deal with okay let's see what people have been commenting on oh so you're yeah you're oh Susan's in the part of Ohio that's way north because it's one of those really tall states um, hello, Linda Walsh. No, you also have the daffodils, Northern Illinois. I met you in Glen Ellen. Oh, that was very cool. Um, that was when I went and taught for uh, string theory yarns. That was really cool. I'm so glad I met you. Um, you, you guys got my, uh, that is the only time I've taught that class on yarn substitution. Um, was it yarn, what do we call it? Yarn substitution. I taught her this whole three hour class on trying to understand and get a really in depth look at yarn and fiber content and yarn structure. And it was a really, really in depth class. And I, I was afraid I was going to bore everybody to tears, but it was one that I thought was really fun. And actually, it's one because I only ever got to teach it once. And I'm really not planning on traveling to teach anymore. I don't know that people can handle a three hour lecture class online, but I've been thinking about that might be one that I could try to actually record and do it as like a class you can buy. Like if I host it on my website and break it into chunks and have it be like an instructional class, like, um, I don't know, there are, what are the sites that do things like that? Like Creative Bug, I think does it. There are sites that do that. Um, I don't know that I want to be in one of those sites, but I was thinking I might try that one. Um, okay, we have a question. Woohoo! Um, I would you would like to knit a summer t-shirt with some cotton in it, but I'm worried about the shrinkage after blocking. Is it legitimate CERN? Never had cotton. Okay, so the thing to find out if it's gonna shrink um is and how it's gonna behave is to to swatch. So what you do is you make your swatch and you block your swatch the same way you're going to um care for that garment and then you see what happens you measure it before you measure it after you see if it's going to shrink uh cotton not cotton is not i mean unless you put it in a hot water situation which you should just never do with cotton uh, it's not it's not going to shrink um cotton actually has a larger problem with the fact that the weight of the fiber causes a garment to get longer to grow and um that is an issue that you can run into but what I would say is make sure that you select a summer tea pattern that is designed to work with cotton yarn so that it will probably be, it probably won't be knit in one piece. It'll probably be knit in pieces and have a seamed section. So that gives it more structure. But if it's really lightweight, like at a fingering weight yarn, that's not as big of a concern. You can get away with fake seams most of the time. Um, but yeah, making sure that you just select a pattern that is designed for that fiber choice as opposed to trying to take like something that you think is really cute but's designed for a wool yarn you're not necessarily going to have success substituting substituting in a cotton yarn because they just don't behave it's just such a completely different fiber and it doesn't behave like wool but shrinking should not be a problem unless again you use warm or hot water you're just going to always want to do it in cold water uh, hand wash, preferably. That's like most of your knitwear. Um, and that was the question. We need more questions. Hello. Welcome everybody who's coming in. Um, oh, uh, if you have the chance and if we want the chance of, um, YouTube suggesting this to other people, if you want to click that thumbs up button, um, that tells, YouTube that there are people like here and interacting and engaging and the commenting also shows that there is like engagement going on, that it's an active live stream and that YouTube will like suggest it to people. And that's might be really important because I turned off the advertising function. It might make it less. YouTube might punish me for that. 
YouTube might not show it to people because I didn't turn on the advertisements. But after the discussions, after the last couple times, after the changes they made and that you guys were getting um, mid-roll ads that were not skippable and everything. I was like, that's, that's got to go. That's we, we're done with that. So I just turned advertisements off entirely, but there may be repercussions for that as far as algorithm goes and things like that, because YouTube, uh, YouTube's a butthead. <laughs> I don't know if they listen in and I might get in trouble for that too, but it's a distinct possibility. Oh, <laughs> hello, Karen. Your his husband won't hang up the phone. <laughs> you're here. I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, you can't hear me. There we go. I'm so glad you're here, Bonnie. Um, it's exciting that, you know, this one, it might, as I said, um, and I think the holiday might be part of it, not, maybe not that many people, but I'm super excited for those of y'all who are here and exciting that there are people who other times miss it and aren't, and are able to be here. So that is super exciting. Hello, Holly and mistletoe. <laughs> he needs to work on his priorities. Exactly. Um, hello, Joe in Sydney, Australia. Good to see you. I actually was briefly in Sydney at the end of last year. Um, I It was the end point of a long cruise I went on. So it was literally, we came into Sydney, I got in a bus, they drove us across to the airport and I left. So I didn't get to see any of Sydney, but I did wake up at 5 a.m. so that I could be out on deck so when we were coming into the harbor, I was able to see the opera house and actually it was the opera house at sunrise. So that was really, really cool. So, um, Behrman, and then I just stayed out on deck and watched all of the really interesting, the harbor is absolutely, it's enormous. I, I mean, the amount of time it took us to get all the way through to where we needed to dock was, was flabbergasting to me. I'm, I'm not used to that size of uh, a harbor, but I really, really would love to come back to Sydney um, because it just looked like an amazing place. I had a lot of fun in Australia. I thought it was so fun. I went to Mululaba, which is quite possibly the most fun place to say I have ever been. I, I don't know that I can think of much of anything that, that trumps or, or out, outpaces Mululaba. It's just, just a great place. Funny. Um, Okay. So, um, okay. My golfer asked, and what about linen sage guidelines as for cotton? I heard that it's hard on the hands. So no, got cotton and linen, actually, they're both plant fibers. Um, but they do behave quite differently. Um, I'm not going to throw linen into hot water, but linen actually likes to be laundered. Um, throwing linen into a washing machine actually is going to, if you think about, if you've ever had a pair of linen pants, that the more you wash them, the softer they get. So the more you launder linen, the softer you get. And yes, uh, when you are knitting with it, it is a very stiff fiber and it has absolutely no stretch. And when you're holding it, you're holding it under tension and, and it can put additional strength on, excuse me, it can put additional strain on your hands. So you might not be able to do the same types of stretches of knitting. Like if you typically can sit down and knit a wool yarn for two to three hours, you might only be able to do cotton or linen or another plant fiber for like maybe one and a half to two hours until you get used to the strain that it puts on your hands because it is different silk falls into the, if 100% silk falls into that same category as well. But you, so, cotton is a softer fiber than linen. So it does require a little bit more delicate care where linen doesn't require delicate care at all. Um, it is a really, really, really sturdy fiber. Okay. Jenna, Jenna KH, I used a cotton to do a short sleeve ranunculus so far so good, not stretching or shrinking. That's fantastic. And you know what? That is one of the ranunculus is one of those patterns that I have seen people do it in everything from lace to bulky. And 
it's absolutely bonkers. It it can really flex to just about anything. Um, okay, Linda Walsh. When teaching someone to knit, do you suggest wooden needles because of the grab of the needles and what yarn is good to teach with? So if I were to teach someone to knit, I would definitely start them on circular needles. And that I think is not like a hugely popular opinion. But the thing is, is straight needles are falling out of favor um, have fallen out of favor to the point where they're actually kind of difficult to find. And uh, I don't think you're doing anyone any favors by teaching them on straight needles when so, so many of the patterns that they are then going to fall in love with are going to require you to use a circular needle. Um, wooden is fine. I would not do bamboo. Bamboo is uh, too grabby. Uh, and, and people who, because the thing is, is new knitters either tend to tension very loosely or very tightly. And if you're on a bamboo needle, those tight stitches aren't going to move. Um, but it, I think that you can get away with either a um, one of those laminated wooden needles, like a ginger, like a nitpick. Uh, uh, Knitter's Pride Ginger or a Likey or like that kind or a a metal needle. I mean, I knit on metal needles. That's what I knit on. But it's going to take a knitter, a new knitter to find what they like. So it's kind of a it's a toss up. Um, you might want to be ready to switch them from a wood to a metal, metal to wood, depending on how tight or loosely that individual knits. And as far as what yarn I would start them with, I would typically start with a DK or a worsted weight yarn on like a seven or an eight needle. And it, I would just go with a, a nice wool um, because you want that stretchiness, like what we just talked about with plant fibers, you don't want to, you don't want to make their hands cranky. So, uh, a Cascade 220, a, um, Barocco ultra wool. Um, I mean, any of those, those are worsted weight. Um, I like Miss Babs Yowza DK weight, but something in the D uh, I would go with either a hundred percent wool, maybe super wash. Um, or you can get something that has um, like a superwash nylon blend. Uh, you can go with anything, but definitely a, a, a yarn that's not going to be really hard on the hands. No plant fibers, nothing slippery, nothing fuzzy, nothing with like lumps in it. Um, that kind of no mohair. <laughs> do not give do not give a new knitter mohair. Hello, Darlene. I mean, are the allergies driving you crazy or are they just driving you further into crazy town? I mean, because I think most of us already live in crazy town. <laughs> just kidding. Um, do, 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 do. It is an it was an amazing harbor. Um, actually, one of the funny things about driving, and I took pictures of it, but you can barely see it. It was, I was, we were coming into the harbor and right after we passed the, um, the opera house, I looked over on the other side and there were these people getting like, like they were obviously had just launched, but it was like eight or nine, um, like kayaks. I'm like, sirs, madams, it is 5 15 in the morning. Why are you in tiny boats? <laughs> it is way too early. Cause I'm like, it's not like you woke up and got in a boat. Like you had to wake up at four o'clock and drive here and get in a kayak. And I was freezing. It was cold. We're talking it was November. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, why are you crazy people in tiny boats? Uh no. <laughs> That is way too adventure oriented for me. I could not believe. I'm like the crazy people in kayaks. Um, ooh, I love knitting with silk cotton and linen too, Holly. I'm not discouraging it. It's just you got to get used to it, and it you got to plan. <laughs> cats Genesis or cats tends to chew on bamboo. Hello, Barbara in Bethesda. Hello, Ikachu. Laminated birch needles. That is, and they work for you. That is excellent. And you're saying that you're not really ready for metal yet. You know what? You never have to be ready for metal. 
it's all personal preference. Um, if if you find that the laminated birch ones work well for you for everything that you want to do, then have at it. I tend to work with needle metal needles because I'm a tight knitter. I tension very tightly and I like really pointy, pointy, pointy points. And you can't get those really pointy points on a wooden needle. It's just not physically possible. They don't taper that much. They end up snapping off. Uh, you can get some point on a wooden needle, but not the level that you can on a metal needle. And I like the points because I do a lot of lace and I do a lot of stitch manipulation uh, with the tips of my needles. So the pointy needles are better for me. But again, that is just my personal preference. And that is my knitting style. If your knitting style is laminated birch, there's no reason to get anything else unless you really run into a situation where you feel like you need something else. And if you do it long enough, you end up with like 800 needles, but you can never find a size five. And that's just what happens. <laughs> um, Deborah, so glad to see you. How do you suggest I cinch in a sweater neckline that's too wide? So I'm sure that quite a few people aren't going to know exactly what I'm doing, going to say. And what I'm going to say is, um, I don't design or knit sweaters, so I really am not going to be very helpful on that situation. Uh, if it had a knit on collar, like, I don't know how the neckline worked. It is entirely feasible to remove that collar and go in and like de do some decreases and like cinch it in and stuff like that. Um, but I'm afraid I am not a good question for answer for you that. That, that was not English. <laughs> that was not grammatically correct. But I'm afraid, Deborah, I do not. But maybe someone else in the chat will have a suggestion for you. Ooh, Stitch Itch. That is a great um, name. Hello, welcome. Allergies are running amok in Southwest Virginia, too. Excellent. And when you say amok, I think, amok, amok, amok. That's, um, is that a Animaniacs? I don't know. When you're running amok. Um, yeah, pollen, pollen, pollen. I grew up in the Ohio River Valley and allergies there were absolutely abysmal. But then uh, after a few stops in other locations, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And Atlanta has some of the worst allergies in the freaking, I mean, absolutely uh, horrible. There's a glamping site at Garden Island where people camp overnight. Oh, that sounds amazing. Um, you know, November is southern in Australia, summer in Australia, but it was cold. Like, I was physically, like, my teeth were chattering. It was definitely, it was, I mean, the sun has was in the process of coming up. I don't know. It was cold. <laughs> but then again, I am a wolf. I live in Florida. And I had been like in Indonesia up until that point in time, which is like surface of the sun hot. So it, it was quite the temperature journey. Kayakers in San Francisco Bay at sunrise all the time. Yeah, no, mm -mm, nope. That is not going to be me. I am not an extreme sports kind of individual. Uh, <laughs> and I am not a get up early kind of individual. <laughs> so I, I applaud those people who do those things. It is not me. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. It's okay, Deborah. Don't worry about it. Um, it's funny because I actually posted this to my personal Facebook just to remind a couple of people, Susan, um, that it was coming up. And I said that if you come in there, expect me to say at least 25 times, I don't design sweaters because that is what people want. I know that's what people are going to have questions about, but I just don't have any information on that. I've, I've made one, I've made one and that was enough for me. Um, I, I, man, while I was knitting it, I was like, Ooh, I'm going to make this one and this one and this one and this one. But I didn't. Um, <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm done. Ooh, crystal Lake. That sounds amazing. I'm not going anywhere at 5.30 a.m. Here we go. Susan, take out the bind off and make it tighter to bring in the neckline. Maybe use a smaller needle, too, for the bind off. So there we go, Deborah. That'll work. 
Hocus Pocus Amok. You know what? I've never seen Hocus Pocus. So maybe it's just one of those viral things that I've picked up. Um, talking about very pointy points. Has anyone tried seen it and carry sea needles from Tulip? Ooh, I'm going to Google those because I did try a wooden uh, Tulip needle that they had at TNNA at the last TNNA um, that actually had a very, very good point for a wooden needle. But when we tried to get them, they hadn't figured out, I don't know why they came to TNNA and they hadn't figured out their North American distribution yet. Like we could not get them. Um, so that was annoying. Let me type this in. S-E-E-K-N-I-T, seen it needles. Oh, I don't want it from shopping. I want to see like the website. Tulip. Mm. Tulip carry C. These might be them. Um, I did use it was a really nice wooden um it was made by tulip they had a nice point a really long taper the um the ferrule attaching the cable to the tip was had a really nice long taper on it and it swiveled so those were all positives to that particular needle but i don't remember let me see if I can find Tulip. Because Tulip knitting needles are Japanese. Um, I'm going to end up on a Japanese website. <laughs> I'm going to end up on a Japanese website. Okay, so the one that I used, I believe, was the Kin Kin Kinas. I think this is the one I used. Yeah, that's the one I used. It was amazing. Um, the other ones I have not. There's a secret rubber ring. Ooh, I would like to get a hold of some of those. <laughs> Okay, let's see how far behind I am over there. Um, oh, Bonnie, that is an excellent suggestion. Knit Talk with a tech editor on YouTube has good video on neckline changes. So that is really good. Um, oh, thank you, my golfer. You liked my, I, my top? I have literally worn it once. And it's one of the reasons why I don't make garments, because I decided to make that garment after I'd lost a a decent amount of weight and I had the confidence to make it and I wore it once and now it doesn't fit anymore. So that was a waste of time. Um, Bonnie suggesting I've done crochet slip stitch around a sweater neckline to cinch it in. That's good. Uh, maple trees pollen. That's not good. Okay. Kim Barone. I'm making the pressed flower shawl, which is DK weight yarn, but it's harder to knit that with the arthritis in my thumbs. I would like to try to make it with fingering weight yarn how do I? So, Kim, I'm afraid I can't tell you specifically because I'm not familiar with that pattern. Uh, when you're dealing with a shawl, typically um, changing the yarn weight isn't going to be much more than finding a neat, what yarn weight you want to use and a needle that works and gives you the drape that you want. It's going to involve swatching, but that is going to completely change the amount of yardage you're going to need to create the piece. So I can't give you any guidance on how much, like how it's going to change, but it's going to change the amount of yardage. And depending on how the shawl is structured, um, taking something from DK weight 
to fingering weight, if it's like a set size, if there's no way to make it like add repeats or something like that, it's going to make it like if you change it from DK to fingering weight, it's going to make it substantially smaller because the thing that is providing the size there is the DK weight. And if I remember the pressed shawl, pressed flowers genre of patterns, um, they are slip stitch patterns. And one of the reasons that you use, I'm willing to bet the designer used a DK weight is because she wanted those flowers to be of a certain size, to have a certain visual presence. And since you can only slip a certain number of stitches in a row, I'm guessing stitch uh, press flowers is two to three stitches for to make that flower pattern. Again, if you change it to fingering weight, it's gonna take the flower motif from being like this big to being like this big. It's gonna make it little, right? It's gonna be a little flower instead of a big flower. And again, that's gonna change the visual impact. And the only reason I say that, and that's why I'm guessing, is because I design with a lot of stitch, slip stitch stuff and I use heavier weight yarns because in fingering weight, it often does not have the impact that it does in a heavier weight yarn. Um, but, it, you would just, if you want to switch it to fingering weight, then you just, um, you're going to, you have, you have to figure out what needle size is going to work best for you for that particular pattern. And then you either just cross your fingers, you have enough yarn or make sure you've got access to extra yarn. If you run out, I mean, it may be bigger, it may be smaller. It, it, there's not, it's experimentation. It's trial and error. I'm afraid is the only way to do that kind of substitution. Um, okay. You did say fingering weight. Sorry. I missed that. So yeah, it's going to, it's going to make the flowers smaller. If it's a fixed size, it's going to make the whole shawl smaller. Um, and it's going to use a different amount of yardage, which is unpredictable because you just got to do a gauge swatch. And Misuru has seen it. There we go. Hi, Sarah Jo. Welcome. You know what? Because they're YouTube. YouTube didn't tell you because they're booger heads. <laughs> we have already discussed that today. And we're also thinking that because I turned advertising off, maybe they're not so happy with me. And here's what it is. Um, kinky and Bari. I don't know any of this. Okay. Oh, here we go. We got a positive review of CNET needles. Somebody loves them. Excellent. Hello in Ottawa, Christina. Chow goo, I love. Ooh, yes. If you buy chow goos from a reputable, like an official chow goo dealer, like a store or something, and I'm not talking about Amazon, um, chow goo is very, very good about replacing anything with any sort of damage or problems. You just go back to the store you bought them from and they replace it. Um, there are definitely some sketch uh, places to buy them more inexpensively on. Amazon. So that is hit or miss. But again, if you buy it from some place that's like a brick and mortar store, you can get them easily replaced. Okay, Kim, I kept talking. How long ago did you type you understand, Kim? Because <laughs> I was just talking and talking and talking. Um, yeah, shall, I have been the last several shawls I've designed. I have actually designed them to be um, expandable. Like they start little and get bigger. And it's just you repeat the repeat until you run out of yarn. And it's deliberate in um, a desire to create a shawl that can be knit in fingering, sport, DK, worsted, to have that flexibility so people can change. But it always, you do have to keep in mind, it will affect the appearance of like motifs. Um, because like a large lace motif in might look large because it's in DK weight and it's going literally because it's in fingering weight, but still fun. We have to talk about needles, Sarah Jo. It's a rule. <laughs> Addy clicks. Don't like them at all. Good on you, though. Um, I, I fight with Addy clicks. The the clicking mechanism makes my brain hurt. I don't. I can't make it work. <laughs> 
<laughs> but again, that is why there's so many different kinds of needles because everybody have different preferences. <laughs> Susan says, if you bar barber live on the calendar, you can set an e-minder. Excellent. That is one way to do it. Oh, hello, red, red wine. Thank you so much. And y'all are my favorite knitters. Um, yeah, the screw needles can cause problems. I have I have issues. I don't use you know, my solution to the problems with things coming unscrewed is I usually use fixed circulars. I don't use a lot of interchangeable needles. Um, I just and actually the interchangeable sets that I have gotten, what ends up happening is I put a cable on it and crank it down really, really tight. And then it's just a fixed needle <laughs> because because I can't get it off. Oh, Ikachu, you are eager to try mosaic knitting. Do you have a favorite pattern or any tips on patterns? I would love to start with mosaic knitted cowl in the round. Um, well, I may have one or two of those. <laughs> so Ikachu, I wrote a whole book on mosaic knitting. It's right there. <laughs> but I don't necessarily start you on that because it's more of an advanced technique. But let me look at, I'm looking at my own page on the Ravelry because I can use their, um, color work mosaic. I can use their search function and easily narrow things down and I'm going to go accessories. And we're going to go neck. And apparently I have eight. Um, okay, two right off the bat. So here is one that is DK weight. And these are Ravelry links. If you need a link to my website, if you don't like clicking on Ravelry links, let me know. And I will... Um, let you know. There we go. So. Oh, you can't get my book in Sweden. Well, that's sad. I, I, it's in English. And I don't think it's been translated at all. Um, so we've got Oscillaire, which is a DK weight. I designed it in Dos Tierras, which is a uh, wool alpaca blend. It's kind of fuzzy. And that one is pretty straightforward. And that is a short cowl. It's like close to the neck. And then the second one I linked to is called Code Breaker. And that's in sport weight yarn. And that is like a long loop. Um, and it has um, it has a design on it that made me think of um, Morse code when I was designing it. I'm like, this is like dot, 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 dit, dit, dit. And so I called it Code Breaker. I was thinking about um, just that. Um, so those are two. Okay. Those are two that you can take a look at. Oh, you like the chevrons? Yeah, Ocelaire. Um, So Ocelaire is Italian for oscillating. Because I thought it looked like um, like an oscillation is what I had going on there. And that is actually what's called a shadow mosaic. And what a shadow mosaic is, is essentially the, hmm, wait a minute. Blah, 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 blah. Where's my mosaic book? Mm, here it is. This is where Barbara Walker lives. Okay, so shadow mosaics, um, well, here you go, that is oscillaire. So what you can see is that they flip back and forth um, in a really cool way, like look at this one, this one's cool, both of those are cool. And you can see they go, um, you're actually, so 
it's like white with black and then black with white. And it's actually the same pattern stacked on on top of each other. It's just they it reverses out the colors of it. Um, there's another oscillating pattern. I didn't like that one as much, so I didn't use it. And usually I monkey with them and make them fit what I want to do because I'm the boss. Oh my goodness, I'm out of focus. There we go. Hang on, I'm trying to get to, here we go, what, Where? here we go. So yeah, see, so she calls them shadow patterns. And you've got color reversal and there's just a whole bunch in here and they're really cool. There's another chevron -y one. But this is this is the Barber Walker. I love this one. Look at that one, right? There, this one. But actually, right here, that is one of the issues. Um, I just like to make people aware that if they choose to purchase this book which is a fantastic mosaic knitting book. I mean, it is the, the, the origination of the idea of mosaic knitting. Um, Barbara Walker very much was of the, this is a ancient folk symbol used by many cultures. So I am going to include it. Um, there are swastikas in here. Um, there are swastikas, there are iron crosses. Um, and so you just need to be aware of that if that is, um, I mean, it's definitely, it is. <laughs> it is, it is what it is. It is an older book. In, it was a different time, but just, I don't want anyone to be surprised when they run into them and you have to be careful when you're using the motifs because there are often times I just flipped past one. Um, they'll be in there and you don't realize they're in there because they're like in part of another one. And I think that um, actually uh, a, a recent popular mystery knit along ran into a problem that the designer chose a mosaic pattern that in certain colors, certain color combinations, that motif really jumped out of an otherwise innocuous motif. So just be aware of it if you use this book. Um, hope I said that nicely enough. <laughs> Oh, mosaic knitting is the easiest and the best, Sarah Jo. It's my favorite. Um, oh, thank you so much, Red Red Wine. Shawl knitting is awesome. It's one of my favorites. Um, yeah, especially when you get into the older ones. You can run into some things that are, you just gotta, you just gotta be like, well, bless their hearts and move along. Um. No, no, my goal first. Is stranded color work Fair Isle a prerequisite to learning mosaic? No, no, and extra bonus different, no, no. Mosaic knitting is really, so when it comes to color work, the simplest form of color work, in my opinion, is stripes. It is color work. You're just changing or color blocking. I mean, simply changing from one color to another color is color work. If you only do it once, like the top half is one color, the bottom half is two color, th that's still color work. Stripes are the next step up, step up because you're knitting two with one color, two with another color, two with one color, two with another color. That's still color work. Mosaic is knitting stripes while at the same time slipping stitches. And when you slip those stitches, it stretches. So what you do is you're gonna have two rows of color A and when you're working with color B, right, you're coming along on color B, if you slip a stitch from this one, that's going to be color A, and you slip it over two rows, 
So then you'll have this elongated stitch that is color A across the color B stripe. And that is the color work. And you just do it in a in a pattern and that creates your mosaic effect. You're only ever carrying one strand of yarn at a time and you carry it either up the inside if you're knitting in the round or you carry it up the side if you're knitting flat. So it's two rows of A, two rows of B, two rows of A, two rows of B, two rows of A, two rows of B, and that's it. You're knitting stripes and slipping stitches. So as far as color work that really produces a pattern, I think that mosaic color work is the entry level to color work. Then you have stranded knitting or in Fair Isle. Now there is strand. Okay. You have stranded knitting. Fair Isle is a subgenre of um, stranded knitting. There, there are stranded knittings techniques that are not Fair Isle. Fair Isle is a specific um, ethnic um, in, in, from a specific area of, I believe, Scotland. Um, and there are very traditional patterns going on and things like that. Um, not all, not all stranded knitting is fair isle, but all fair isle is stranded knitting. Does that make sense? Um, just like slip stitch color work is an umbrella term, and then mosaic is a subset. Not all slip stitch color work is mosaic knitting there's different techniques. You can do really interesting things. And I have a book uh, called The Art of Slip Stitch Knitting, and it has different things in it. Um, then the other thing, so after Stranded, you also are going to have Intarsia. And Intarsia is um, making blocks of color. And you have to change, you're again, only working with one yarn at a time, but you have to like switch between them as you're going along. And it's, it's a whole different, I can't explain it because I don't do it. Uh, but I would say that mosaic is the simplest form of color work that creates a pattern, a repeatable pattern. Just, I guess, I don't know if I hemmed it hot enough about that. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, Lace Jellyfish, I was kind of trying not to say the person's name. <laughs> I was just trying to be a little bit vague there. I have not seen Dune 2 yet. Um, I will probably watch it when it shows up on my TV. Um, I've already read enough spoilers about it to know that I'm not going to be particularly happy about it because they've definitely made some choices that I didn't care for. Um, I understand that people love it and it's beautiful and that's great. Um, I didn't particularly care for part one. Uh, there was just, I, I, I had issues. I had issues and that's just because I'm a stick in the mud. Um, it was beautiful, but they made sure again, they made choices that they're entirely entitled to make that I did not agree with. And it made me not enjoy the movie very much. So I'm not, not chomping at the bit to see the part two. Um, cause reasons <laughs> I'll see it. I know I'll see it, but I'm not going to pay to see it. Um, Oh, <laughs> Thank you so much, Lace Jellyfish. That was not a critique on you. And please continue to chat and comment. Um, it was I. You did not have to take that off. I was just saying that I did know who I was talking about, but I didn't want to like throw any tomatoes at anybody. Um, Mapes, I'm so glad you liked Mapes. Jenna, you like my Confundo. Thank you. I'm glad you like Confundo. That one is a DK weight, but it's like on a size nine needle, so it knits up fairly easily. You have one of my books? Excellent. Yeah, I don't do Fair Isle. I have done Fair Isle once. Um, I made a Christmas stocking for my son in bulky yarn. And and it wasn't even Fair Isle. It was just stranded knitting because it was just two colors and it wasn't even Fair Isle motifs. It was like snowflakes. Uh, so it's <laughs> very much not me. Um, there is no float tension in mosaic knitting. Katya, Katya asked, is it hard to ten learn how to manage float tension in mosaic knitting? There is no float tension in mosaic knitting because there are no floats because you're only ever working with one strand of yarn at a time. Uh, when you slip your stitch, you just make sure you leave, you don't pull tight after slipping a stitch. You just leave the amount of space that that stitch needs. It'll have just a little tiny bar running across the back of it. And that's it. There are no floats. It's just run it up the side, 
or run it up the center. Um, and that's just the at the beginning of every other row. At the right side or every other row, you're going to switch your yarns. So there's there's no floating. There's no carrying two yarns at the same time. It's just the one yarn. Um, any spoilers on future patterns? Um, I think it's in the front room. <laughs> And it's very small. I can tell you I've frogged it twice already. Yay, me. Um, it's going to be multicolor. It's going to be six. The My next pattern is a shawl. And it is six skeins of like this. It is uh, designed in six DK weight mini skeins, which are 80 grams a piece from Miss Babs. So it's going to be DK weight, but um, as always, if you don't want to use all six colors, you can definitely get away with not. Um, it's going to be a shawl. I know y'all are stunned. And it's going to have uh, a little texture and a little color work lace. So it's it should be really straightforward. Um, but I'm, um, yeah, I've been... <sighs> Honestly, I did a gauge swatch. I figured out what I wanted to do. I cast it on. I knit the first this much of it and realized that I really, really didn't like what the gauge was doing in the particular stitch pattern. They'll learn you. You got to you got to swatch in the actual stitch pattern. And so I had to frog the whole thing out and redo a bunch of math. And I'm trying again. I just finished one repeat of the second section and I need to weigh that yarn to figure out how many repeats I'm going to get at that. And that's way more information than y'all need. <laughs> okay, Sarah Jo, you know what? Um, wait until after I've actually seen it. I'm, I'm not going to judge it. Um, I'm not going to judge it yet. I'm not going to judge it until I've seen it. Um, no floats, man. Uh, you know what? You good question, LPGA. Um, hello, number nine. Okay, guys, y'all, chat amongst yourself. I will be right back because enough questions. Oh, hello, Harley. Um, enough questions. I've had enough questions that I need to go get my knitting stuff that I took to my knitting group. I'll be right back. Okay. Got my bag. And actually something else I picked up in knitting that you guys find hilarious. So. Okay. What did you guys do while I was gone? <laughs> Bulky weight gift knit hat. Excellent. Rev it up. Elizabeth, I'm starting... I'm starting to get a sneaky feeling that you might like that shawl. I'm just starting to think, Elizabeth, that maybe you like the rhythm of that shawl. <laughs> shawl pattern into a bandana. That's interesting, Katya. Hoodie and we're working on the I-cord. Oh, my gosh. How much I-cord do you have to work on? Have you ever seen the little ones that you crank? Okay. So the question was, what's the next one I might swatch? So... Uh, yesterday, I went to a knitting group here in uh, Sarasota that is at one of our local libraries. And actually, I'm glad that we got here because that is something I wanted to mention. If any of y'all are actually looking for and have had a difficult time finding people to knit with or a group to knit with, I want to recommend that you check your local libraries that have rentable rooms because you can frequently find um knitting groups at libraries so and you get you got to check like each individual library unless you have a really good website um that lists everything but there is a group here that i have started knitting with and they're a bunch of fun ladies now 
they're not hard to find because other people can find it and come in. If you are part of a knitting group, one of the things you will find is that people will find you and say, hello, I used to knit or my mom used to knit or my grandma who passed away used to knit crochet insert fiber art here. I, we are closing down their house, getting rid of their stuff, moving them into a nursing home. And we have these six garbage bags full of stuff that we would like to donate to you. <laughs> Invariably. So you get all this stuff. So the, the leader of this group brought in one of said donations for us to go through. And I actually, these two, these yarns were in there and I grabbed them and I think I'm going to swatch them for a swatch lab. And I think maybe both of them at the same time. So these are Lion Brand yarns and this one is called Nubu. And then this one is called true boo now first i need to find out if these yarns still exist because they could be discontinued but even but i just to mention this because the interesting thing about these is this one is 100 percent lyocell and this one is 100 percent rayon from bamboo and i want to swatch these measure them before i block them block them measure them after I block them, and then maybe hang them with some weights on them to see how they react to, to tension, um, to see how these two different yarns, um, if there's any substantial difference in their performance. I know I haven't done 100% rayon yet, so these two are on the block for probably the next swatch lab. Um, Oh, you have a surgery tomorrow with a four-week recovery. Well, I hope that everything goes swimmingly, Elizabeth. Ooh, new friend. You're like, ha, 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 you're my friend and you don't even know it yet. Um, uh, Sarah Jo started a new semester. <laughs> um, okay, so Sarah Jo saw True Boo at Joanne's. What's the difference between Lyocell and Rayon? That is a good question and something I am going to figure out when I do the Swatch Lab, because I don't actually know. Um, technically, I think they're both rayon, but Lyocell, well, okay. Well, this one says that, okay, one thing is the difference between ni nylon and Rayocell, Lyocell and rayon is a brand name, this Circle R. Um, this says it's an eco-friendly production of Lyocell, a fabric made from plants, leads in the fiber industry in terms of energy and water conservation. So this has to do with how it's manufactured. Um, they do feel different. They're both slippery, but they do both feel different, but that could just be the structure of it. Um, it's going to be, so this is, says it says 100% bamboo is bamboo, but rayon can be made with any number of different plant bases. If you ever see something labeled sea cell, that means that the plant, uh, origin of the plant cellulostic fiber was seaweed. And that's how they can call it sea cell. And you can get it with, with bamboo. Birch is very common. There's all different sources, but I'll be doing research into those and figuring that out. Um, ah, you can do it, Christina. Join a knitting group. Now, another thing I picked up at my knitting group is... Yes, thank you. Yes, thumbs up if you can. So they brought books, and I don't normally grab books, but this book, I just had to grab. This is the newer look in sweaters, jackets, and dresses. Burnett number 66. It was 60 cents. I don't know if I can find a publication date on it. It is falling apart. Um, so the sweaters in here are just fabulous. I mean, look at that. Isn't that amazing? All of these beautiful tailored. I don't know if I can do a book look. 
maybe it would be fun. We might do a book look, but the, it's just really cool. Um, unfortunately, yeah, actually, the, the cover just came off. It is very delicate. It has some absolutely, I don't know that I want to do a book look because, well, I don't think that anyone else is going to be able to find a copy of this book. I want to look at this. Look, look, look at this. How lovely is that? Absolutely lovely. I think we're having our own little book look right now. Um, this one is the one that made me have to take it home. Look at that black top. The neckline on that is just to die for. Um, and there's so many in here. And then there, look at here. I think this is the same. Look at the neckline. Look at the neckline on that. It's so pretty. Um, that sounds like a great plan, Christine C. Christina, it's a dress. It's a whole dress in incredibly fine yarn. I will never, ever, ever knit this. Um, but it's, look at, look at, look, look. Oh, I like looking at stuff, my golfer. I like pretending. I also look at toddler clothes and I don't have a toddler. <laughs> um, I, it's just, just stunning. I think they're amazing. Um, and frankly, classic. But the thing that just... Okay, so... These, let's talk about size inclusivity, okay? So this, these patterns are graded. They start at size 12. They include 14, 16, and 18. So there are four sizes, okay? The size 12 is 34, 25, 35. 35, 24, 35 is, no, 34, 25, 35 is the size 12. And the size 18 is 40, 30, 41. So the largest measurement is a 40 inch bust. So I'm going to go with no on the size inclusivity. <laughs> On that one. Okay, Karen Albee, when you change colors, do you drop one color and start knitting with the old? No, you don't duplicate stitch. Um, okay, you don't cut them. Um, hang on, 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 hang on. This is a, an exceptionally old video. One of the very first ones I made. There we go. That is one of the very first videos I made because they never explain. So that is a video on how to carry yarn up the side of your knitting when you are knitting stripes. So that one you might want to bookmark to look at later, Karen. Um, once your husband has gotten off the phone. Um, I Actually, I don't know if she can hear me now. Um, let me see if I can type it. I don't know if she can hear me. Um... Yes. So I think if Karen can hear me, I hope she can. But if not, I'm going to just say it. Um, it sounds like the way she's asking it is that they don't tell you what to do with the ends. When you're just knitting two row stripes, you do not cut your yarn. You're going to have two ends at the beginning and two ends at the end. And that's it. You weave them in just like normal. You're not going to cut them. 
Yes, they are children's sizes. Those are tiny, 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 tiny sizes. There is no way. <laughs> that, that, you know, Arnetta, I don't think that body was ever in the building for me. <laughs> I mean, it might have been parked outside of the freaking McDonald's. But not me. Yes, Ikachu. Um, yes, so Sarukar is mosaic lace. And there are, on my Ravelry, there are several mosaic lace pieces that are not in my book. Um, Sardukar is one of them. Now, Sardukar is literally a 164 line chart. There are no written instructions for it. You just have to follow the chart. And the reason why it's that way is because none of the rows repeat. So if I wrote it out, I literally would have to write out 164 lines because uh, there's no repeat X number, you know, seven through 12 or anything like that. It is 164 individual lines. So it would have made a ridiculously long pattern and it would have been very difficult to follow. The chart works much better. Um, thank you, Sarah Jo. Thank you. And I am sorry. I acknowledge what you've said. And I apologize. Um, you're right. Everybody's bodies are different sizes. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we talk about size inclusivity. But it should go in both directions. In all directions. Um, and yeah. I really don't have an excuse. I'm sorry. Kind of sad now. In trying to relate with another person, I alienated another person, and that's not fair to anybody, so I apologize. Okay. Okay, if you are carrying colors up the side to knit stripes, how many rows between color changes is a little too much? Okay, so 10 rows I would cut. Um, 10 rows I would cut. Yes, knitting is for everybody, Sarah Jo. <laughs> all shapes, sizes, all genders, all persuasions, everybody. Except for people who like moths. Knitting is not for people who like moths. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it depends on the moth, but seed moths are horrible. If you have pet seed moths, you might want to hold off on the knitting. Um, okay. Um... I typically don't like carrying yarn over more than four rows because you can start running into problems with tightness up the side. Um, I don't do a lot of color blocking though. Well, and actually the new pattern that I'm working on is gonna be striped and then chunks of solid. And the chunks of solid are probably gonna be about this tall and I will be cutting. I will, I will definitely be cutting yarn. Um, so yeah, you got to find what you're comfortable with and how far up the side you're comfortable. You got to make sure you manage that tension at that point. Um, okay. Karen said, okay, what about in the round? It really is the same thing in the as in the round. You just, the idea is when you lift up the new color, you want to trap that old color between the fabric and the new color you're pulling up. But as long as you pull it up in the same way each time you do it, that's all you got to do. So when you, it's actually easier to carry up the inside when you're knitting in the round. Because what it is is you'll finish two rounds in the round, and then you just kind of hold the old yarn to the side and pull the new yarn up from the inside and then drop the old yarn and then just keep on knitting. I couldn't ever figure out how to really film that in the round because it's hard to get the camera inside. That might be a video for soon. You found patterns in old bookstores. Yeah, it's wild. It is absolutely wild. Um, these these are um, these are wild. Sarah Jo, if you would knit one of these since they're your size, I'd be happy to mail this to you. Do you want this? I just took it for giggles because there's definitely, I, I, I will not do the math to size them up, but also I will not wear them. I just thought it was funny and beautiful that the, the neckline on that one is absolutely gorgeous. Um, that's sticking back there for a while. 
Dun, 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 dun. We're all good. Hugs to everybody. Hugs. 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 One of the things about building a community is learning to talk to each other and learning to learn from our mistakes. And I think that everybody um, is wonderful here. And y'all are awesome. And I appreciate that we can have open dialogue and talk about things. And I want everybody to feel that this is an accepting space. And sometimes that means that we have to be called in. And then we can give some hugs. And then we're all good. Yeah, no, I'm not going to knit from an old... I am not going to knit from an old pattern at all. Old patterns are a lot of... And then shape the neckline. And, like, that's the amount of information they give you. <laughs> it's like... Make an armhole. Thanks. Thanks. That's that's helpful. That's helpful. Um, <laughs> super helpful. Okay, so the last thing in my bag is this. And I'm not going to stretch it out, and I'm not going to make it easy to look at because I don't really give that much away. But this, this is what I'm working on. And here's the back. <laughs> you can see the back. So this is what I, this is where I am now, um, and again, it may need to be frogged again if I've messed it up. So that and then, so it's those two colors, but then I also have this color and this color and this color and this color. So that is what we have. So we have the, the dark colors and the lighter color, and then we're going to go through these different colors in various combinations. Um, hello, I'm so, I'm so glad you got you caught us. Um, hello, I'm so, I'm so glad you got you caught us, Christina. Um, shape the usual way. My personal favorite, Christina Gervais, is um, reverse shaping for other side. That's super helpful. Um, but yeah, so this this is what we got going on for my next piece. It's going to be a little more complicated than I've been putting out some really simple ones. And this one's going to be a little more complicated. But I, as I said a while ago, I want to I wanna do a little bit of both. I want to do stuff that I find challenging and interesting to design and well it's all challenging and interesting I want easy knits and I want slightly more challenging knits this one isn't going to be super hard but it is going to take a little a little more thinking and possibly more tanking depending on how well you do I'm pretty excited about it um you know what it's interesting that things have shaken out the way they have because there's something I had wanted to talk about um, specifically. So I was getting ready to come on, right? Uh, I was getting ready to come on to, I was eating my dinner and then I got to run in here and I get my lights turned on and I got to get my setup done. And then I had to change my clothes. And I realized that this is just something I do. And it's something uh, I started doing and there's a reason for it, and I'm not proud of it. Uh, I live in Florida. So a lot of times I'm going to be wearing um, sleeveless or something with a little tiny cap sleeve on it because it's hot here. And I have a lot of that kind of things here. And one day when I worked in the yarn store and it was at an old location, um, a customer came in. And was talking to me about how much they liked the YouTube channel. And that's always nice when someone would come in and give me really positive and say nice things about these videos that I make. And I was having a lovely conversation with this woman. And it's someone who had been in the store fairly regularly. And um, I knew them peripherally. But, you know, as a this is a person who comes in and I talk to them. And while we're having this conversation, the individual says, can I give you a piece of advice? Said, I need to make a suggestion, a piece of advice. I don't remember exactly how it was phrased. I was like, okay, because we're talking about my YouTube channel and I can always take constructive criticism. And she said, you know, you wear a couple tops that have really short sleeves on them, like little flutter sleeves, and they just really aren't flattering. 
in the video, you should really reconsider wearing those. And what she was saying to me was that, hey, you know those fat upper arms you have? I don't want to look at them. And I don't think anyone else should have to. So you need to cover those up. And I just kind of smiled and nodded and extricated myself from that situation. But I can tell you that ever since that interaction, I almost never wear a short sleeve. I almost never wear a short sleeve. Um, anything above, I mean, I'm definitely not going to wear sleeveless. You might see one or two videos where I haven't changed out because I'm in a sleeveless piece. Um, but, and it's because it made me self-conscious. It made me self-conscious and it made me mad. But, you know, after the fact, all the things I could have said that I didn't say. Um, but, and the funny thing is, literally, <laughs> I came in here, I changed out of what I was wearing and put on a top and I sat down and when I reached up to adjust something, the first top I put on, the sleeves were like here and then I went and changed my shirt a second time before I was comfortable enough to be on the screen. So, you know, we do have to be careful about what we say to other people. Um, so yeah, we say to other people. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but I thought that, but if you go back and look, if you go back and look and you can see, I mean, if you look at my videos, you can see there was this little pink top that I liked wearing that had little cap sleeves and then you never saw it again. And it just disappeared out of my wardrobe because somebody said something to me about it. So we got to be careful. Okay, so after that, very exciting story. <laughs> old patterns are like old recipes. Um, how much butter is butter the size of a thumb? That is hilarious. Thank you, Susan. Flutter sleeves. You know what? I'm not perfect. I'm not, Sarah Joe, I appreciate you saying that. I'm not perfect, but you know what? I, I need to get over it, but in the same way, you know, you never that that you, you got that little nagger nagger nag, nagging person in your brain that does it losing sound um are you guys hearing me she definitely wasn't canadian <laughs> that is fantastic <laughs> i don't know what what would go on with the sound <laughs> 